So this short diagram here is, is kind of how the National Party is, is structured and hopefully it makes more sense, but I'll kind of walk you through it. Um, in kind of the center of the screen here on the right, you see the National Committee. So the National Green Party, the, the highest decision-making body is known as the National Committee, the Green National Committee. And it's made up of, um, I don't know why it says 200, I think it's 150. <laughs> yep. But um, 150 delegates. Um, and these delegates represent all of the different uh, state parties and the identity caucuses that we mentioned. So that's kind of on the left here. There's the state parties that represent each of the states. There's identity caucuses that represent a particular identity. And so um, the, the five that are currently exist are the National Black Caucus, the Women's Caucus, the Latinx Caucus, um, the, the, Lavender, uh, the Lavender Greens, which is our LGBTQIA caucus, and then the, uh, the Young uh, Eco-Socialists, which is the Youth Caucus for people that are under uh, 35. Um, uh, all of these groups have been marginalized but um, to varying degrees in U.S. history, so we try to make sure that they have some kind of extra representation in our process. Um, so delegates from each of these uh, state parties and caucuses go to the National Committee, and the National Committee um, you know, will vote on making different decisions. So um, you know, setting a budget, spending money, updating the platform, and all the various things that you would kind of expect for um, a national party. Um, in between making those big decisions, you know, there's administrative work uh, along the way. And so the national committee elects uh, from its pool of delegates, a uh, steering committee. And that steering committee handles uh, mostly the administrative stuff of the party. So making sure that, um, it, you know, if there's a proposal to vote on that that proposal is handled the correct way, uh, the delegates get updated on the proposal and, and they can cast their vote and the vote gets counted and, you know, all of those administrative things. Um, overseeing staff, for example, uh, the National Party has a couple of staff members. Um, so kind of guiding their work day to day, things like that. So when I said earlier, I'm a national co-chair, I am one of these seven people. I was elected last July to be a National Steering Committee member. Um, and that's been an interesting experience, uh, kind of seeing how the party works um, from the national there. Um, while the national committee is the ultimate deciding body, that's not actually where a majority of the work happens. The majority of the work happens in the, uh, the standing committees that you kind of see at the, the top of the, uh, the image there. Um, so as uh, Chris had alluded to earlier, there's about 20 uh, committees at the national level that handle different things. So there's like a ballot access committee um, that helps coordinate uh, ballot access uh, between all of our states to try to make sure that the Green Party is on the ballot in as many states as possible every year. Um, you know, there's a, um, there's a media committee that handles putting out press releases. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's a merchandise committee. If you go to the Green Party website and buy a t-shirt or something, you know, there's merch. Um, there's various action committees. So um, eco action, peace action, things like that. So if you want to um, get involved in planning and organizing some sort of event or strike, you know, those, those uh, committees might be where you're interested. Uh, there's a platform committee that oversees the process of updating our platform. So... Um, there's about 20 of them in total, um, but, you know, you can see how the, the, the majority of the work of the party is divided up in these committees and um, state parties and caucuses can appoint people to these committees to be part of that process. And then as those committees do the work, they'll send the results of their work to the national committee for approvals, you know, uh, to say to, to approve it and finalize it to make it part of the platform or to approve it and spend money or, you know, whatever it is that needs to happen. Um, and that's basically how the national party works. Um, many of the state parties, I think, adopt a very similar model where there's a state committee that makes decisions. And then, um, and then there's local parties or, you know, that might represent counties or regions within the state um, that make up that state uh, party, that state committee. Uh, the final thing to mention here is that the Green Party is part of a global Green Party movement and so our national committee also elects delegates to go, um, to go and um, 
meet with the green parties that are, are international. So um, we actually have a picture of my, uh, from my local chapter, the Allegheny County Green Party, which is around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There's a photo there um, with the flag for the, uh, the Japan Green Party, the Greens Japan. Because uh, one of our members actually went to Japan and um, got a tour from Japanese Green Party members of the, uh, the Fukushima disaster when, um, when that nuclear plant happened. They uh, went there and talked about it and um, kind of viewed what happened themselves. And there was actually kind of a joint press release between uh, the U.S. and Japan over that disaster and, and how countries needed to respond to it. Um, so, you know, I, I like these... I, I like these examples of, of places or, or of times where we can uh, cooperate with our um, international green parties, because ultimately, uh, you know, capitalism is a, um, a global phenomena, which means that ultimately our green socialist movement, our green party movement has to be an international one uh, to really deal with that challenge. Um, so it's important that while we're building locally, that we also keep in mind that it has to be part of a national and even international movement um, to really change the system. And it can be really inspiring to have those meetings too, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. in, in 2018, I went on my honeymoon and um, we were going to Denmark and uh, we were, you know, just in kind of the initial planning stages about to, you know, buy tickets and book hotel rooms. And my wife said to me, can we go to Amsterdam too? And her reasoning was that Nine Inch Nails was playing in Amsterdam. They're one of her favorite bands, and she'd never seen them. So what better way to see them than, you know, to see them internationally? Um, and so I was like, yeah, sure, but I get to take meetings. Uh, I get to take some political meetings while we're there. And the reason I said that is because Amsterdam is ran by the Green Party. They're the, they're the largest party on the city council. At the time I was there, the mayor was green. Um, and so I was able to arrange a meeting with a green, a young black woman who's a green city counselor. Um, and it was such an inspiring conversation. Um, you know, they, and they are one of part of the Nordic block of European green parties, which are more eco, which are an eco-socialist block. Um, you know, so we get to hear about how, you know, how do they win? They win by saying they're going to build a hundred new social, social or public housing units. They win by saying they're going to put a million solar panels into the city um, within a few years. They're going to they're winning by saying they're going to ban cars from the, the canal district and that all uh, all taxis have to be electric. Um, you know, they're winning by being openly anti-racist and an openly anti-poverty. They're winning by being radical socialists. Um, you know, so it can be really, really inspiring to have those conversations with people. Um, in those kind of networks that we can make and, and learn from them. And, you know, in our conversation, one thing I learned was that the Amsterdam Green Party holds their annual membership meeting for the public in the same venue where we saw Nine Inch Nails, right? They have mm -hmm. five to 10,000 people showing up to a public meeting. Uh, so it's not just, like we said earlier, it's not just that they won these seats, right? It's not just that they got to be the largest party on the city council and, and that the mayor is agreeing. It's that they did all that by turning people out, by building a base, and that base now turns out to support them. Um, you know, I, I remember we were driving back to the airport and we were talking to the cab driver, and he found out that I was a green and turned around and gave me a high five because he was a green, right? And uh, and they they have a really unique situation there where, um, you know, he told me that even the far right parties are worried about climate change. Because Schiphol International Airport, Amsterdam's airport, is eight meters below sea level. They can't, uh, they can't pretend climate change isn't real, that they're a low-level <laughs> country that can't afford it. Um, you know, so they are still seeing success, even when you take the issue that we tend to get pigeonholed away, right? Um, when, when they're not the only people advocating for serious climate stuff, uh, how did they kind of rise above? was by going to the rest of the pillars and fully embracing you know, a, a socialist anti-oppression uh, platform that, that resonated with, with working people throughout the city, so. Yeah, no, one thing I, I learned recently was that like, for example, the Australian Green Party, um, somewhat recently, I think, 
uh, switch to a, a dues paying membership structure. And that has been a huge help, a huge boost to them because now they have, they've raised, you know, millions of dollars to support their candidates and, and to really grow their party. And so they're growing very rapidly now. And, you know, it's, it's like you're saying, Chris, inspiring to hear stories from other countries because, you know, we're all, while we do face different, um, uh, you always have to keep in mind that we face different challenges in the U.S. Especially is, in the electoral system. Yeah, especially in the electoral system where, um, and especially the U.S. electoral system is is probably the hardest among all the democracies in the world. Um, uh, but, you know, with that caveat in mind, um, we can talk with um, our international green friends um, about different strategies we've tried. And we could say, oh, I did this thing and it really worked. Maybe you should look at it. Or, or I tried this thing and I don't think that was a really good idea. You know? <laughs> we could share those stories with each other. And we can learn from each other. That's part of being an international movement. Um, and, you know, that happens at a national level. That happens at a national level. You know, we try things at different states even and talk to each other. So, you know, it's, it's again, building that big movement for long-term systemic change. It's not just about any one particular campaign or candidate or anything like that. 